Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 20th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today took a look at a specific artifact of Emotet traffic. Emotet spam bots are sending, of course, a lot of email and they are spoofing the 0.0.0.0 IP address in some of that traffic. Of course, you won't see actual traffic to that IP address. That IP address is not routable, but it, for example, shows up in the hello header and is then, of course, copied into received headers by email servers receiving that email. And of course, once you have it show up in an argument to a hello request or in a received header, then you will also see DNS lookups for various spam block lists. And that then usually starts with the 0.0.0.0 IP address, followed by whatever host name the particular list uses. Safe to say, whenever you see that IP address, it's at least spam and more likely malicious. Other botnets may use that as well, uh, but uh, Pratt specifically sees that with Emotet, so you can use it as one indicator that you're probably dealing with email that was generated by an Emotet infected host. Another suggestion here was also that uh, this may actually be a deliberate attempt to figure out if the receiving mail server does have any kind of spam filtering, which of course may make it less suitable for spreading malicious uh, Word documents or other office macros as what Emotet usually does. Now, just a little postscript here uh, to that uh, Sierra slash eight network. It is an unused uh, network according uh, to uh, the uh, traditional RFCs. However, uh, Linux in the last couple of years has made an effort uh, to actually reclaim some of this IP address space. There is a Linux kernel patch available that makes 0 slash 8 routable. Of course, the idea here is to get back some of that IP address space that uh, was originally not usable because of the old classful addressing, which hasn't been in use for, well, uh, 20 plus years. And currently we still have the unfortunate issue that uh, Safari and uh, with that really WebKit is uh, leaking uh, database names cross origin. A report about this earlier uh, this week, I believe, or was it Friday? Forgot. But anyway, there is a patch available now for WebKit. Of course, this doesn't do you much good uh, because, well, it would require that you essentially uh, compile uh, the uh, browser and the operating system for iOS and also Safari for Mac OS uh, yourself. So yes, a patch is available, still waiting for Apple to actually roll it out into Safari and iOS, iPad OS. And need any more reasons to uninstall various software that comes pre-installed on computers these days? Well, the Asus Care Center has a relatively easy to exploit privilege escalation flaw. As many similar applications, this one is used to install software updates and it's of course running with the highest possible privileges in order to accomplish that. But upon startup, it's checking in the directory for a DLL file where the director itself is world writable. So anybody could drop a DLL into that directory and with that obtain the escalated privileges. A patch has been made available on December 27th. So double check for it and install it. Uh, you may also just want to disable the software update application as a scheduled task. And SolarWinds fixed an improper input validation vulnerability in SurfU. Now, this particular vulnerability was already exploited, so you certainly uh, should update this. The patch was just released yesterday on a Tuesday. The problem here was that this vulnerability was exploited to then 
further attack organizations with the log4j vulnerability. And Microsoft came across that when they looked at some of these log4j exploits. And talking about Microsoft, well, regarding the HTTP.sys vulnerability, last couple of days there were a bunch of supposed exploits being posted uh, to a GitHub for this vulnerability. They were all claimed to be denial of service or blue screen uh, exploits, and they looked very much like exploits for, well, last year's vulnerability with the accept encoding header. As far as I can tell, all of the exploits posted so far are essentially fake. They don't do anything. In many cases, they don't even exploit the older vulnerability. So uh, no public exploit yet for the HTTP.sys vulnerability. Well, that's it for today. Remember, you can listen to this podcast via your Alexa if you have one. In the morning, you can essentially get your wake-up call by using the Flash News Briefing with this podcast. Also available on plenty of other platforms. Tell your friends about it and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.